to love and serve. Also, we could look at service. Now, you'll notice that there's a lot of human beings that, that feel the importance of service. Uh, I can think of like social services, Catholic social services, uh, United Way. I mean, you can think about service agencies. They're there to serve. Or you can think of service in terms of doing volunteering service. Like, I, I went through that myself. Uh, I was part of this uh, thing called the Holiday Project, where we went into nursing homes and hospitals to vi visit people that were shut in during the holidays. Thanksgiving, Christmas, and our slogan was, You are the gift. And we would just go in, it was service, it was extending and everything. And the interesting thing about service is that it's very helpful, it's a very helpful step at kind of getting you out of that egocentric me, myself, and my and I, and getting you into that sense of, of, of opening to share and extend with others. But also, you start to realize that there's a lot of people that work in the social services. I was among them. I, was, I worked in social services uh, in, a, in a number of different ways, community services and social services. But there's a number of people that really, I'll say, burn out. Yeah. There's a very high burnout rate in social services. And that's kind of a clue that there's some ego mixed in. Because if you truly were in divine service, you would be in joy, you wouldn't burn out. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't be like, I gotta take a vacation from all this social service, I've been helping people so much, I'm, I'm dead tired, <laughs> you know. And, and that also gives a hint that giving and receiving are the same. And so if you feel tired from serving, then you've been serving the ego. Mm -hmm. That fatigue and tiredness comes from following the ego. That when you're following the Holy Spirit, you are inspired. You are in the Spirit. You are in the joy. <coughs> Sometimes people will say that to me, they'll say, Oh man, just looking at your like coming events page, I get tired uh, looking at that long thing. It's kind of trimmed down a little now, but it used to be like you could go on and on, like this day, this day, this day, this country, this country, that country, and everything. I was at one of those Course in Miracles conference, and, and Gary Renard, during our presenters meeting, he was saying, Oh, I, I just, I don't travel like David. <laughs> That's just... You know, it, it was just like there was such a full travel schedule, different towns, different days, different countries, just boom, boom, flights, and on and on and on and on, just packed in there, for not just for a few months, just for years, packed, packed, packed full. Just pure delight for me, absolutely, because it's to me it's involuntary, there was no individual doing it, it was just saying yes to the Spirit, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say? And that was my prayer, and the Spirit says, actually a lot. <laughs> you, you're very willing. Well, here, try this on. <laughs> For about 20 years, try that on, you know. And it was like, thank you. Thank you, thank you for, for giving me the opportunity to teach what I would learn. Uh, it's not fatiguing at all to follow the Spirit, but if you have service ideas, like you're doing service for a future end, or you're doing service for somebody else, or you're doing service because you think the world is in need, the world's not in need, it's the sleeping mind that's in great need. The world's just a reflection of belief, so there's no real need in the world. I wasn't ever going to different countries because I think thought that those countries needed me. I was going there for my benefit, for my mind's benefit to open up to the Holy Spirit. I used to read that and certain groups would say, well, so and so in the Middle East is really bad, let's beam light, you know, to these poor people over in Ethiopia or what, the conflict in the Middle East and Syria, this and this is like, What's, what's all that's the beaming light stuff about? You know, 
how arrogant. Do you think you're just sitting over in America, so, so holy, and you're just going to beam light over to these <laughs> poor people that, you know, beam light to the, the Middle East? Yeah, the Middle East, that's where Khalil Gibran came from. Yeah. You know, yeah. maybe you should open, Rumi, maybe you should open some of their books and soak in a little bit of that light before you beam it to these <laughs> lacking countries and lacking cultures, you know. Open your mind, you know. And then all the stuff about being sent out as missionaries or messengers, you know, of light to try to go to what? You're supposed to heal the, the ones that, that have lost their way. No, it's all for us. This is what the inspiration is. It's all for us to have a transformation of consciousness, to, to know the love and light ourselves. It's not about fixing anybody, changing anybody. So it takes a, a bit of washing away. And a lot of the ideas of service, it's, it's service for those that are less advantaged. Who set that up? Who set this world of advantaged and disadvantaged up? And who am I, or who is anyone, to point a finger at somebody and say, you are disadvantaged, but by God's grace, I'm going to come and help you out. I'm going to lend, reach down and lend a helping hand. I remember this saying I used to hear, you know, pointing the finger at somebody and saying, but for the grace of God, there go I. And I used to think, how <coughs> arrogant! To point the finger at somebody and say, but for the grace of God, there go I. We must talk about superiority, you know. It's more like coming to a divine sense that your brothers and sisters are literally who you are. And seeing them in fullness and wholeness and completion. And saying, thanks to the grace of God, there go I. Thanks to the grace of God, I can see them as whole and complete. I can see a world without problems. I can see that as I am healed, the whole world is healed with me. I can see that if I am happy, the whole world must be happy too, because there's no world apart from my mind. And who would we want to be a part of a system where you could be happy and others could be suffering? Or you could be enlightened, and others could be unenlightened. You know, that's why we have our big dance party, and we dance together. We circle dance, we dance, we wiggle, we're in the joy of the Spirit together, because we are the same, and we're feeling the sameness of the Spirit. The Spirit unifies us. So, to me, this is so, so important, that we're letting go of these personal concepts and in the end, all service is really self-service. <laughs> we didn't get to watch that movie, uh, Way of the Peaceful Warrior. <laughs> but at the very end, Socrates, the teacher, he goes back there and there's nobody at the service station. It's suddenly a self-serve station at the end of all this work with this teacher. I mean, the symbols in that are, are amazing. But, but you cannot burn out if you see that all service is capital S self, is Christ service, it's service to yourself, it's extending the love and light of Christ, and by extending it, it's the most natural experience you could ever have, because you were created to extend love. And when you're extending love, you, you feel the joy of that original creation. So it's really beautiful, and it's really simple, but but the ego has just tried to make up a lot of other concepts to try to mix in, inject in, to throw us off track. And forgiveness is always a gift to yourself. You're really never forgiving anybody else. You're just pulling and releasing these crazy concepts from your consciousness that don't belong there. And you're giving a gift to yourself and to everyone. But, but you're not, like, saying, well, God made me holy, so I have the power to forgive you for your sins. You know, it's forgive your brother for what he has not done. See the misperception in mind and release it from mind. That's really how you, you take the enemy. Pluck the enemy out of your mind. <laughs> Don't point the finger at the enemy as if they're in form. Because 
It just shows you that you believe in grievances <laughs> if you're pointing fingers at enemies in form. It's cool. It's good stuff. It's healing. It's ah, yeah. yeah. To love and serve.